So in a few days time we are gonna see the end of Akron and Luocha's banners and they are set to be replaced by the release of Aventurine and of course the rerun of Jing Liu. Two units who are highly anticipated, one because they are a brand new sustain unit, the first sustain unit, proper sustain unit since Huahua and of course Fushuan. And then of course on the other side you have Jing Liu, an awesome DPS unit and of course very much waifu material for a lot of people. So we must ask the old old question, should you summon on the upcoming banners, should you summon on the current banners? Or should you summon for something in the future? Let's get into it and let's talk about the upcoming releases. Now, of course, this video is advice based at the end of the day. There is nobody going to, uh, who's going to force you to use your Stellar Jade. At the end of the day, the decision is down to you guys on whether you want to summon on these banners or not. All I'm doing is giving you guys the pros, the cons, and all of the information you need going into this banner on whether or not you should be summoning on this banner. So keep that in mind as you watch the rest of this video now aventurine is of course going to be the primary focus for a lot of players and that's for a couple of different reasons the first reason and in my opinion the primary reason i think a lot of people will want to summon on aventurine's banner is because he is the first preservation unit we have gotten since fushuan and our fifth preservation unit and i'm not even joking because right now in the game we have japard fire mc March 7th and Fushuan. Those are our only preservation units in the game and so Aventurine being our fifth preservation unit in the game and knowing how strong the other preservation units are, of course we know how strong Fushuan is. Jepard is seeing a lot of use especially with the release of Acheron as well. Fire MC can still hold her own in combat as well and March 7th while obviously aged out is also still a very strong character especially for the early game and so Aventurine's release is very promising because of the fact that he is preservation. Now the second reason as to why he's obviously going to be extremely popular and a lot of people are considering summoning for him is because of course of his story. The version 2.1 story in Penacony absolutely nailed Aventurine's story story and as a result he's gained a load of fans a ton of fans and i mean have you seen that magazine cover it's on your screens right now i mean look at that man i'm not sure if i'm looking in the right spot but i'm hoping that i am looking in the right spot because that is a man is what i would say but seriously on a real note Aventurine is a very very popular character now so a lot of you guys are probably wanting to summon for him and honestly speaking i think he is very strong as well I mean, we've looked at his kit, of course, you guys saw my preview video, if you haven't already, go check it out as well. But funnily enough, I dropped that preview video and then I think a few hours later, every content creator under the sun that is linked to MiHoYo in some way, shape or form managed to gain access to some test server, the uh, creator experience server, of course, and uh, was able to test out Aventurine and show you guys how good he is. And honestly... He is so versatile in my opinion. He's got a lot of options when it comes to relic options. He's got a lot of options in terms of how you want to build them, the teams he's going to be on. He is one of the most well diverse units that they have released in the last couple of patches to be quite honest. He's probably one of the more well diverse units in the game at this moment in time as well. You know, we have Fushron who's like that. We have Sparkle as well who can be like that as well, right? But seeing uh, obviously yet another sustain unit come into the game and be like that is very, very good and very beneficial to a lot of players. And more specifically than anything else, if you are a new player, it is extremely, extremely beneficial because of course having a sustain unit is integral in this game, especially towards the end game, right? I mean, Fushuan for me is a monster, but I personally don't have anybody on the other side i have to try and use you know fire mc mixed with bailu i have to use somebody else potentially and it becomes very tricky for me personally and having aventurine as an option is phenomenal i absolutely love the fact that aventurine has released uh, you know now and he is the way he is to be quite honest i think he is very promising and only based on those facts alone I think he is worth summoning for. Now, of course, the problem comes down to the fact that I know a lot of people have gone for Akron, and rightfully so, because Akron is a monster of her own right, right? She's a completely different animal in this game compared to every unit that has released and has changed and revolutionized how 
strong a unit can be, right? And so I know a lot of people are going to be struggling for Jades. What I would recommend initially, just saying it out loud, I think going for the 50-50 is not a bad idea at all. Because at least if even if you get Aventurine, you are coming out of this banner with probably one of the best units in the game. And one of the more consistent and diverse units in the game as well with, of course, Aventurine, right? He is able to be on any team. His relic options can range from the Pioneer set that, of course, uh, you know, the likes of Acheron, uh, you know, and or Dr. Ratio and all these other guys use. He can use the defense plus follow-up damage set, which makes him also capable of doing that. You could go full defense on him as well if you want to go for full sustain build. He's got a lot of options, right? And he's got a lot of variety going for him. So in that sense, he makes a valuable option just because of the variety you have. Now, you obviously have until the 7th of May to decide whether or not to summon for him. And then, of course, you know, we are going to be going into the next patch, of course, with new characters releasing as well with Doc, uh, with Robin and Bootil. I was going to say Dr. Ratio. I know you guys uh, saw me saying that nearly, but uh, Robin and Bootil coming out as well. So you might be looking forward to that as well. But if we look at the now, right? If we look at the now, I mean, Aventurine also makes sense because he is follow-up attack based, right? And, uh, well, if you are a new player and who's just starting right now, and of course, before the end of 2.1, you would have gotten Dr. Ratio as well. And of course, Dr. Ratio plus Aventurine, you've got yourself a second team going already, or at least one team going already, even if you haven't summoned whatsoever so far, right? Aventurine plus Dr. Ratio works so well together because of the follow-up damage and the follow-up attack style that they follow, and it just makes them really, really strong together, and it makes them a very, very good duo and of course you want to try and throw in topaz whenever she reruns she'll be a great option for the team maybe down the line they might release a support unit that is capable of doing the same right who knows robin might be that candidate as well right so if that is especially the case right and you're working on your follow-up team um that is another reason why you should probably be going for aventurine as well if you are building up doctor ratio plus topaz Maybe Himeko and Herda as well during uh, Pure Fiction as well, right? You can chuck an Aventurine into that team and he will perform like a absolute animal with that squad, especially with the way he is designed, of course, right? Now, the units on his banner as well are nothing to scoff at, of course, right? You obviously have the likes of Serval, Luca, and, of course, Lynx. Lynx being probably the best option out of the three. I think she is still a phenomenal healer. Um, very good general healer. Probably the best four-star abundance unit in the game at this point in time. I know a lot of people are probably deliberating between Lynx and probably Gallagher, but I think Lynx just outshines him a little bit in my personal opinion. Gallagher has his own pro, uh, pros and, uh, you know, positives, but he also has his cons as well, which I think Lynx can cover quite well comparatively. And so I think uh, Lynx is a really good option for this banner, of course, right? Going alongside Aventurine. Serval and Luca, I mean, I would have probably said that, obviously, I know that we can get Herda for free, you know, completely maxed out. So it doesn't really make sense in that front, of course, to have a follow-up unit like Herda with Aventurine just because... Anyways, for most people, she's E6 anyways. But still, having her as an option would not have been maybe the worst idea on the planet. Outside of that, do I think there could have been any other unit that could have gone well with, uh, you know, Aventurine? Not necessarily on the off the top of my head. Maybe they could have gone for more harmony-based units. Maybe Ting Yun could have come in. Maybe, uh, uh, maybe Hanya potentially could have been a good option here as well. Just anybody to help support Aventurine, I think would have been a better banner option. Uh, but alas, I think, I mean, Aventurine and Lynx her herself, both of them are, you know, great candidates on their own. Now, of course, you know, if you take a look at, of course, the banner itself, I mean, we've seen it as well. There is obviously a good chance you could lose the 50-50 and that could make it uh, a little bit iffy, right? Of course, I mean, we're checking this out right now. Wait, did I get a five star? No way. I literally got a five star in the first multi. There's just no way. Okay, that was a bit of a bit of luck there. I hope that's not taking my luck away from the actual game. Please and thank you very much. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Pom Pom, please. I do not want that to happen to myself. But, of course, we have to talk about his Light Cone, of course. Brilliant Fixation. And uh, the uh, current banner, of course, is the Aracaron one. We don't want to look at that one. We want to look at 
gilded uh, imprisonment, right? And I mean, we took a look at it, of course, as well, right? We did take a look at it. So if I can probably go and find it, if possible. Um, Aventurine's light cone, can I see it here? Is he actually gonna, you know, they're, they're not gonna show it to me. Can I actually just click on this one? There we go. There we go. Got to the light cone inevitably. Thank you, Game 8. Um, also, we're using Game 8 today because I find, I'm find i finding it a little bit easier to show the banners and stuff through this as well, right? Um, clearly not so much. But Aventurine's, um, Aventurine's uh, light cone increases the wearer's defense by 40%, and when he provides a shield to an ally... His crit damage goes up by 40%, lasting for two turns. And then when he attacks uh, with a follow-up attack, uh, when he attacks with a follow-up attack, he will be able to increase the damage taken by the attacked enemy by 10%. Now, of course, this is, I think, at S1, not at S5, if I'm not mistaken. So there is going to be a boost to this as well. And honestly, knowing that he scales off defense, we know this as well because, of course, of the uh, uh, because of his preview and stuff. We know his crit rate uh, scales off defense and a couple of other things might as well. I think there is a good uh, argument to have uh, have this for him. And would I say it's as important as Acheron's light cone? I kind of think so, in all honesty, while there are some other good options as well, right, that you can probably use to help you out, like, for example, some uh, some some uh, light cones that can apply debuffs, like Trend of the Universal Market, right, I think that's not a bad option as well, right, at the end of the day, that helps out massively by, you know, inflicting a burn damage to the enemy, right, that's pretty good. Uh, you could go for Destiny Threads, uh, Destiny's Threads re, uh, re for, for Woven, which of course gives you a um, damage boost for every 100 points of defense. Unfortunately, it gives effect res, which is not bad, but I wish it was defense here, because then this would have worked really well with the second half of the text in the, uh, you know, light cone language itself, right? I think this light cone is not bad at all. But, I mean, if you think about it, right, looking at all of these effects and stuff and comparing it to, you know, what Aventurine's Light Cone does, I think it's pretty important. I don't know if it's as significantly powerful as Acheron's, you know, how, for example, Acheron's Light Cone is versus Good Night Sleep Well. I don't know how inherently Unjust Destiny is comparing to the likes of Trend of the Universal Market or anything of that sort. But based on the text and based on what we know Aventurine is capable of doing, I think it's very important to admit that, you know, he may need need is the right word here need that light cone of his in all honesty so keep that in mind when you're summoning for him is that uh, you might notice a big difference between the two light cones in all honesty uh his own and of course the one that is a four star option that being said though obviously there is no doubt about it just like good night sleep well i think you can still use destiny's threads vo for woven you can use trend and still make use of it and obviously still have Aventurine perform well. So keep that in mind is that it's not the end of the world if you uh, don't have his light cone. If you don't have his light cone, that's okay. Obviously, there will be a future time in the in, in the future where, you know, you will be able to basically get his light cone whenever he reruns next time, right? So keep that in mind, of course. Keep that in mind. I wouldn't worry too much necessarily. And of course, remember that we are going to be getting the concert for two light cone as well, which is not bad at all, of course, right? As well, it's for a new light cone. It's not bad. 16% defense. And then it also increases the, the damage dealt by the wearer by 4% for every character on the field that has a shield. Um, and then, of course, that's at S1 as well, so it'll probably be a lot better at S5. So that's also something to bear in mind. But again, it's a summonable light cone, and it's a new summonable light cone as well, only on Aventurine and Jing Liu's rerun light cone banner. So keep that in mind. It's not, like, guaranteed that you will get it. So just a forewarning there. Now, we'll take a look at Jing Liu, who is the other unit of the next patch that is coming out as well, rerunning, in fact. And, I mean, Jing Liu is still a monster for a destruction unit. I mean, she is immense, like, insanely powerful. I mean, if you take a look at her on the Pridwin tier list, she's still S+, plus alongside Akron and Donghan IL. Honestly, personally, to me, Akron is a tier above both of these characters, to me personally. Um, but Jing Liu still being an S+, plus, of course, for MOC. A in Pure Fiction, but still not bad at all. A is still... 
at the end of the day a solid uh point to be at of course right obviously ideally you want to be in srs plus for uh you know pure fiction but still a is not bad at all you can still make do with it i know so many people who make do with uh blade and clara and stuff like that in in pure fiction so jing Liu being a as well is realistically not bad at all she's a character i personally really wanted when uh, she first released but of course i think she came out at the same time as topaz and I prioritize Topaz personally because I like Topaz's design a little bit more than Jing Liu, to be quite honest. That's just me, of course. Yeah, you can uh, you can you can call me blasphemous for that, but I don't care. I love uh, Topaz way more personally. I really do love Topaz a bit more in terms of her design and stuff, um, as well as character. To be quite honest, Jing Liu's character is like side quest only good luck trying to find her side uh story stuff behind that side quest of course right you have to get lucky with right get finding the right one but that does not change the fact that she is a monster of a unit of course uh, uh you know completely um she is absolutely a monster of a unit and uh, just like a lot of other dps units in nowadays Pioneer is an unbelievable option for her, especially if the enemy is debuffed, of course, right? Um, I mean, like, it's crazy, man. It's crazy how good of a set Pioneer Diver of Dead Waters is for a lot of DPS units nowadays. It's crazy. It's every unit is using the set, basically, right? Uh, but, of course, her, you know, in terms of just general sets, you've got still Hunter of Glacial Forest, which is still solid. You've got the two-piece, two-piece of uh, Pioneer plus Hunter, of course, as well. The only issue is, right, and the reason why a lot of people may avoid going for Hunter nowadays is because of generally how the Relic domains are set up nowadays, the older ones at least, right? Some of them are paired up with bad relics some of them are paired up with still okayish relics so of course you know that is something to keep in mind of course going into uh using of course uh jing liu as well um now one thing to note is that of course she is uh, a, a character that will obviously have a really good light cone off rip thanks to of course her store on the fall of an aeon having a free uh, light cone that's that good of course right which in my opinion is very solid of course right is amazing i think the fact that we have on the fall of an aeon which i really hope we do get more light cones like this in her store i'm hoping that maybe next patch or something like that we get uh, some more light cones uh, like on the fall of an aeon the uh, hunt one as well i think that'll be fantastic so of course she has a nice free to play option as well that a lot of people can get very easily of course right and Teams wise, I mean, she's very basic. She uses a lot of the units that you might already have, of course, your Ron Mei, your Branyas, your Fushuan slash uh, Hua Hua. If you have, of course, these sustain units, really good options. I mean, I, I think it's absolutely worth it if you do have these setups. And if you, of course, if you really want to go for Jing Liu, she's still a very good unit. So keep that in mind. And of course, like I said, with the right unit of course right you know or with the right light cone which i mean you still you have the right light cone it's not a problem at all so keep that in mind of course her own light cone is going to be insane as well so keep that in mind of course right her own light cone is pretty darn strong at the end of the day as well keep in mind it's really strong giving crit damage and then of course relying on her stack of eclipses basically just dealing extra damage for every attack is insane it's insane absolutely insane so yeah very much uh an interesting option now would i say should you summon on jing liu i think if you have the dps options already and you are uh, you know you have two teams already with dps options out the wazoo jing liu is not really required in my opinion i think a lot of people should be prioritizing the sustain unit over jing liu in this situation because when it comes to sustain units right we don't get that many of them, right? At the end of the day, right? Uh, since 1.0, we have had Luocha, Fushuan, Hua Hua, and of course, Aventurine, right? That's four only. And um, amongst, you know, remember, every patch, we get two characters, two new releases. 1.0, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 2.0, 2.2. We have had nearly eight, nine patches. We have had nine patches, basically. Well, technically nine patches because we know Bootil and uh, Robins as well. Nine patches. And uh, since then, we've only had four sustain units, basically. So 18 characters have released four sustain units. I mean, yeah. And almost every patch, we get a DPS unit. Even next patch, I mean, Bootil's coming in. He's, he's a hunt character. He's DPS as well. So I feel like when it comes to DPS options, I wouldn't worry too much 
What I would concern yourself with is the fact that, you know, sustain units are relatively rare. And so you might want to consider going for the sustain unit option instead. So keep that in mind, of course. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Are you guys going to be going for Aventurine? Are you guys going to be going for Jing Liu? Are you going to be saving? Let me know in the comment section down below. I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.